Hey guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and this is now part 8 of this stud build. And this is the 1 16th scale Das Furks, in association with Tacom, um, Stug 3 House G. So uh, we've got all the holes together, as you can see, if you've seen the other parts, we've got all this together. I've added these supports now for the front fenders. Um, and in part 7, we basically got this far, and we got all this all done. And what I've done now, you can see in here, I've put Mr. Surfacer in that joint there to make that angle iron look like a piece of angle iron rather than two separate parts. I've also filled in the tiny little gaps that existed between these gussets here and the um, and the vertical sides, well, near vertical sides. So, <clears throat> all in all, looking good. Lots of work to get them on, lots of trimming. Go back and have a look at part 7 if you haven't already seen it. Um, lots of sanding. My one piece of advice I would give, anybody who's got this kit and not built it yet, um, if I built another one, certainly if I did the, or probably will do the Panzer III, I would seriously leave all of this off. Fit your torsion bars and everything, but don't fit any of your suspension arms until you've got all the hole built up, because getting this down onto here is proving to be a bit of a nightmare, and I would love to be able to get some big rubber bands around it, really clamp it down, and then get the glue in there, let it capillary in, and then leave it overnight to dry. But obviously with all these suspension arms and everything in there, I can't. Now I don't have clamps big enough, so what I'm going to try and do is clamp off of here, off of the return rollers, um, with these with these clamps here. So it's kind of onto there, and then clamp onto the onto the upper hull structure. I don't know, we'll see, we shall see. So basically, as I said, we've got that far. So the next thing we've got to do now is actually fit this upper structure onto the hull. There are two pieces of photo etch here. Um, now I'm looking at them and I can't, I do not have a clue. You can see here, here is the photo etch. Okay, it's just two pieces of tread plate. Okay, and there's an angled end on one end of each. You can see we've got a straight end, a 90 degree end, and we've got an angle end there. Okay, so that's all they are. And it's showing them here as going in. I cannot see, I mean, it looks like they're vertical, so they're not horizontal. Um, are they sticking up? Are they laying flat? I just, you, you, you can see there, they've got them here with two arrows going down, and then you can see here, they're pictured in. So I'm going to wait, I think, and see how this rear end goes on, and then uh, see how it looks. But we can see here, we've got the... We've got the photo etch there, I can see it there, but I can't see anything here. Oh, this, this, it looks like they do sit vertical, but um, I don't know, it's just very, very vague. So I don't know quite where they're going to go. Um, we shall see. So um, I'm going to leave those off for now, and then we'll come back to them later. So basically, in part eight, we are going to get all the way up to the gun and then in part nine we will start on the gun which is going to be a great part of the build so what we're going to do is get all of this done i've got all the parts off we're going to get that mounted onto the hull i've got all the parts off i cleaned up all ready to do all this we've even got the photo etch in there as you can see all done all ready to go so um that's all good so that should be fairly quick just to glue all that together and that'll be it for part eight so the first thing we're going to do is get that top glued onto this lower hull, which is going to be a major task. Now, I just want to show you something here. When it goes together, it really is. Because the problem is you have, you have your fender, okay, which is obviously one piece of plastic. Attached to the fender, we have these mounts. And they go into these slots here and here, here and here. So they have to line up. Then you have these tabs on the bottom of these parts here, which are actually part of the interior here, okay, which is glued onto here, and you've got the same on this side. Um, and you've got these edges of these fenders that have to go around these features here. And then you've got these slots which have to line up here. You've got these mounts here, which have to line up with the back there. So you've got all these different parts all assembled and they all have to come together and fit. So what happens is, you plonk this on here, just like so. 
okay and then you can see these back ones line up straight away but I can't get that to go down so if we look under here I've got to basically if you look under here I've got to make sure, make sure that goes in there okay line up all the back and everything and this is the other thing I'm talking about you see I want to be able to push down on it and really work at it but the trouble is I've got all my suspension in there if I didn't have those swinging arms on there I could push down on here because it would be sat on the bottom of the hull and as you can hear that corner there is just clipping in with a bit of pressure so it needs to be glued in place so I think what I'm going to do is glue this area here just these sides and then let that set and then deal with everything else after because they are the main culprit of what is going to position this hull in the correct position okay and then we can deal with the front and the sides and everything after but that's my main concern you can see it goes down there so if I pick the thing up, I can get that to go in there. And you can see we've got a half decent joint down each side. Okay, there's a bit of a bit of a join there, obviously, but we'll just leave that as if it's supposed to be there. Um, you know, we haven't got a full interior, so we're not going to worry about it. But basically, that is it. And we've also got this front along here where all this armour plating picks up in there. So I think I'll probably glue the front as well. So what I want to do is get some cement that's going to stay wet. For a while i think i'm going to use this one this is this is very thick and gloopy this is very similar to the white cement but i think it's thicker okay so i can actually i think i'll put it on here so i can put some of this on here just like so hopefully it won't dry but what i should be able to do is get in there with some extra thin and reinvigorate it if I need to it's so thick it strings that it's like the old tube glue come on oh look at it going everywhere it's a pain in the ass okay so that off of there a mess I won't glue that front with that because it's a uh, you can see it stayed it stayed wet. I'm just gonna put another couple of dabs on there just to give it a, a bit of a fighting chance right so we get that out of the way we'll get this on here And this is what I'm saying, if you didn't have those bloody suspension arms on there, you could get some big rubber bands around here now and get it all clamped down. Okay, so that's going to stay down like that. We've got some glue oozing out there. Got it on my fingers as well. Just get rid of that. Look at that, you just roll it off. Yeah, I don't think that glue's doing anything at all. Oh dear. I'll get this done off camera. Okay, so there we go. Now I can see I knew there was a reason for leaving those hatches workable. See, you can get close pegs in there and clamp that down. Because that front, this glasses plate here, or the front panel, whatever you call it, that just wants to fall down. So you have to clamp it up to this upper structure and, and get that glued in. Um, one other thing I would suggest if you haven't built this kit yet, Make, make notes in your instructions because what I'm telling you is will work. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not touch and go. These plates here, these additional armour plates, applique armour I think they call it, um, don't put them on. Leave them until you've attached it to the hull and then you can get in there with your glue and run along the seam. Uh, but with them in the way you can't get in there. So basically I was able to get some extra thin into here, into the back corners and hopefully that will run in. Um, I'm not going to put any in there because it will damage the paint, it will look horrible. So hopefully the glue will take care of it. We've got glue at the front, <clears throat> glue at the back. And I ended up going in with this one, the Mr. Cement Deluxe, which is a lot thinner than the Tamiya stuff. But it seems to um, take a little longer to dry, so that should work out okay in the end. Um, <clears throat> there we go. So I've got the clamps on there. You can see it's clamped off of the bloody glue string everywhere. Um, so you can see it's clamped off of the return roller onto the top there.
this is clamped underneath the base making sure you're near the pivot not on the end of the actual suspension arm there and then that's clamping that corner down and then we've got these two closed pegs at the front I've just noticed what I'm going to do I can get in there and get some glue into there I think just get a drop in there where that support goes I'm not work concentrating on the front of the fenders I'm not concentrating on the on the backs it's just this area around the fighting compartment I'm, con I'm concentrating on just get some glue in there as you can see those mounts haven't gone down all the way and contacted these mounts here you can see you can see in here there's a gap if I get the light in there you can see in there there's a gap I don't know why the lighting's so bad today I've got three lights on here um, there's a gap there where I'm pointing it hasn't gone like round. it won't go down anymore so it's just it's just how it is um, so there we are so I'll leave that to dry now for a good few hours because um, it just wants to spring back off and hopefully we've got enough glue in there in fact I should be able to I can get a paintbrush. I can grab a paintbrush. I should be able to get in here. This paintbrush has got Mr. Surfacer on it. Where it's hidden, I should be able to get some capillary in there. Just a couple of drops. nothing else it will revitalize all that glue that's in there get it all welding together there we go so as I say hopefully that'll be enough and that'll hold it and then we're nearly there this rear panel is a bit uh, <clears throat> just sits behind that bulkhead so it's still a bit you can see it's a bit flexible you can make gaps in there I'm not going to glue that until I've got this on the back on and then that will hold everything in place. So there we are. We really are starting to get some of this now. So uh, hopefully that will stay in place when those clamps are all removed. Fingers crossed. Right, so the main part of the hub, the top hole and everything now is glued down and all nice and solid. This is about three or four hours later. I've been out and give the Mustang an oil change. So you can see how clean the engine is. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, dum -dum 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 -dum. we've got a rule here I've got a steel rule clamped across the fenders to keep them parallel and then I've got the clamp I've got these pegs here which are holding these inner uprights these inner supports onto the fenders we've got these clamps here which are holding the rule to the clamp to the fenders and then I've got these clamps here which is holding the rule down and what we've got to do I'm going to try and show you it's going to be difficult you can see this area here that I'm pointing to where you've got the dark grey against the light grey if you've got this kit you'll see it that is actually sitting on top of there um, and then on the inside here which I don't think you're going to be able to see there's like a piece of angle I can't get the camera in I can't get the angle to show you it it's kind of in here in where I'm pointing now it's in there there's like a piece of angle that sits on top of the front of the hull um, that needs to sit down on the edge now I've been trying as hard as I can to get these fenders to sit up tight to the hull but then I realized there is a I don't know if we've got the same on the back no we haven't where the uh, front the, the front upper plate here is welded to the hull you've got a like a 45 degree angle where the weld is so that actually stops the fender sitting tight up against the side of the hull so that's why there's a little gap down the inside of here so that's all good so with that all clamped in place and everything pulled down what I can do now is just get in there and get some extra thin in there and then again leave it for a couple of hours or a few hours to weld itself together so I think what I'm going to do is becoming quite unwieldy now. I think I'm going to put some glue in there and that will keep that down. Maybe I can put some glue in here and some in there. They're quite springy and they're quite easily knock offable. 
so we need to be a bit careful about you know we need to make sure we've got plenty of glue in there holding them on because uh, I think they will try and just keep popping off as soon as you touch them so I think we'll have to be a little bit careful of that um, do the same on this side this thing weighs a ton with all these clamps and everything on it and of course the steel wool get some glue in there and then I can get some down in here and some in there okay and then that once that's dry that should hold everything in place now what I do want to do is try and get a small tiny drop in there on the angle iron and let it run along a capillary along and that will really help to hold it in place there we go so I'm just going to leave that now once again to let it dry. Okay, so this has been on for about three hours now. So I've got the roof in there as well. I took it off the sprue just to see how it fits. Uh, so it's been about three hours so we can start taking these pegs off. See how it all goes. See if it stays where it's put. See if the glue has done its job. Take those clamps off, slide the rule out. There we go. So that's our front fenders on. And unfortunately they have taken on a bit of a a bit of a camber you can see there there they need to come down on the outside edges but um or is that just the camera that's doing that yeah it's the camera lens look because it, they do the rule they're, they're pretty straight it's just it's the camera making it look funny okay so there's the engine cover there as well so that's the front done um so happy with that what i am going to do is just Without going too mad, I'm just going to put some extra thin in there at the back. Don't want to go all the way forward because that's how you unglue things. If you've done something wrong on a kit, if you soak the joint in extra thin, it will um, it will melt the joint again, and you can take it apart. So that's those fenders in there. Right. So now we can start looking at the back half. Now again the back half is all sort of all floppy and all over the place. Um, I've been looking at it, it looks like it's got a sort of position where you kind of have this, if I can get it on the right angle, you kind of have this, yeah I don't think I can show you, there's like a square ledge on that rear support. I think it sort of falls naturally onto the edge of the square. So we've got basically these mounts here. And then these mounts here on the back, and that's it. Uh, looking at these bits of photo etch, these here, these look like they go vertically on that rim. But I've had a look, and you've got like the um, engine intakes on the sides here. So I think I'm going to fit them after I fit the engine intakes. So we need to get these glued on. Again, I'm going to use a rule to make sure this all stays flat. So what I'm going to do is clamp that on there like that. Clamp that on there like that. There we go. So that all looks good. So I could just put some glue in there. Certainly a damsel easier than the front. Looks like this needs to move out a touch. Put some glue in there. Put some in there. And put some in there. That is simple as that. So that's that done. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm glad I didn't fit this cover on here with those two little bolts. They'd have been broken off about 50 times. Um, so yeah, bit of advice for you there if you're building this. Uh, I think what we'll actually do is come in under here as well look, because we've got the got that there we can get in there with that there we go we can get in there with that one we 
can get in there with that one and get the glue really flowing into that joint. There we go. So I'm looking underneath here now and I can see that we have this moulded on There's this moulded on continuation, so it looks like it's sort of one U-section bracket. So we need to make sure that's kind of butted up and it's going to stay there. So we'll get another clamp on there, make sure it's going to stay in position. And there we are. And then once again, we can leave it to dry. Right, so here we go then. So I've painted, well, I've been off camera. I've painted this in here gray. I've also painted inside of these parts here. These go on the side and these are like the, um, I don't know if they're the intakes for the air filters or they're just for air cooling, just to allow air to circulate the engine bay. But so many times I've also painted the photo etch as you can see. Um, but so many times I have seen models where the kit is completely built and then the modeler sprays down in there and you catch the light in certain angles and you'll see light grey plastic or tan plastic or whatever the kit was made of. So I always like to get in there and spray it with a dark colour. Um, I would normally use black but I, th I thought I'd just use dark grey because this is going to be dark grey with a dusting of tan over it or the desert yellow, whatever. So, so I've done that. Um, also sprayed the photo etch on both sides. What I should have done was videoed this and showed you when you spray photo etch, don't be tempted to just paint it. Next time you do a grill or something, do this, okay? Hold it straight, spray it, and then look at it end on. And you'll see that it all of a sudden looks brass coloured. You need to get all the angles, like every angle on both sides. Otherwise, it just... Because it's a military kit and everything's going to be dark and dirty and everything. If you've got any shiny brass, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So moving along here, here we have the back end of the tank. This has been about, I don't know, two or three hours now. Uh, to give you an idea of time, um, about two hours ago, you watched part six. Okay, so that's where we are now. Now I'm filming part eight. So we'll take these clamps off, and there we go, and those fenders have stayed in place and they're nice and straight, nice and parallel, and we don't have any issues with them at all, but we do have to be careful not to knock them because they will easily be dislodged, I think. So they're all glued up and welded in place. Right, so, um, one thing I haven't done, which I need to do, is get rid of this Mr. Surfacer. If you haven't seen me do this before, what we do is we take some Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. You can use IPA, um, which is isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol, um, but it takes a lot longer. So what I'm doing with this is just coming along and with a cotton bud and I'm just wetting it. Okay, as I said, using Mr. Color Leveling Thinners and I'm just literally wetting it just to soften it. Okay, wherever it goes. It will take a little while just to, to break it down. Okay, and then we can put the lid back on because that stuff stinks. And we can wipe away our Mr. Surfacer. And the reason I'm doing this rather than sanding is, as you can see, we've got bolt head detail and stuff on there, which I don't want to get rid of. So if we use a cotton bud, we can just... work away at it just like that and uh, we can leave it in the seam but remove it from everywhere else without losing any of our lovely bolt head detail and stuff so there we go as you can see there, if you look, you can see that we've actually left it in all the grooves. And there's a bit here I think I just spotted. Oh no, I thought I spotted an area where it all come out. And there we are. 
that will probably be plenty good enough to be honest and then if you want to you can come along with the clean end of the cotton bud just wet it again and then wipe over just to remove any excess residue that's on there And there we go, so now we've got a nice seam free joint, we haven't lost any detail, we haven't done any sanding and uh, that's what we're after, getting rid of the gaps as you know how fussy I am about gaps there we are. so I'll get the other side done and then I'll come back and there we go, that's that side done as well, nice seamless joint Looks just like a piece of angle iron now, which is what we're after. Get that sort of one piece look rather than have any gaps in it. So, going back to the manual, we've done all that. We've done all that. Well, we've done everything except for the um, tools and everything, which go on the fenders. Right, so let's start looking at this engine cover. And then, once we get the engine cover on, we're into the gun. So this part is going to be all about... The engine cover, right, so engine cover is here, we've got a bag of bits here, and all these bits are all the bits we need for everything on this page, and basically everything is here to get us done <laughs> on the uh, 28, 29, 30 and 31. So we're starting off here, we've got this lid D8. We've got the internal frame B20 and then we've got the actual door and then we've got some hinges going on there. So the hinges actually form, they go on here. So basically I want, um, okay, so we've got all our doors here. Need to make sure I'm getting the right doors and not messing up. Um, and then we've got the covers here. Now you can see these are... These are all the A5s, so there's there'll be four of those, but we only need three of them. And then we've got here, we've got D8, I've written 8 on that one. And then here we've got D9, I've written 9 on that one. So there's those two there. And then we've got these frameworks, so there's all those there. So we've got six of them, even though we only need five, I believe. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five of those. So we only need five, but we've got six there. We only need three of those, but we've got four. So these doors here, we've got B6 and we could do B6. So they're both the same. So that's okay. So we've got those two there. These are obviously different. If you can't spot the difference between them, you shouldn't be making models and then we got some little clasps there for the uh, barrel cleaning rods we've got these little hinge things that go on the sides they're going to cover up the photo etch panels and then we've got these little lifting eyes here so they're going to go over there at the way and then we've got all our hinges so we've got the males there females over there male male female 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 male female so there we go, so we've got all the hinges there, we've got a toolbox there, so we're good to go. We've got everything here to do everything on this page. So I'm going to grab some Tamiya Extra Thin, get that engine cover out of the way so we don't go dripping glue on it, and then I'm going to build up this door here. So, first things first, I'm going to put the hinges on. So we've got um, A23. And A23 are the, they're the females. So we've got one there. And there are two little pips on there that just line up on the door. And there's another one here. So 
So that's that one. And then we've got this frame going in. This can go either way. It can only go one way up, but it's it's sort of symmetrical, so it can go either way, I think. Hang on. So that's got them all facing down. That's got them all facing down. That's off to the left. That's yeah, so basically it can go either way around. You're not going to see much of it anyway. And then we can just grab some extra thin and touch it in there and let it capillary around. And glue itself in. So there we go. That's that fitted in there. <clears throat> And then we've got this door, D8, that's 9, this is 8, and that's going to go on the top with the holes off to the left hand side. So that's just going to go in like that, so I'm guessing the best way to glue that on is to get some of the white top, because it won't just dry out in seconds flat, and then we'll put a drop on there, drop on there, drop on there, drop on there. And then we'll put a drop on there, drop on there, drop on there, drop on there. Do, 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 do. There we go. And that's number eight. And yeah, it's going that way round. <clears throat> so that's on there like that. And then what I think I'll do before we actually fit these onto the rear hatch, I think I'll get in there with some grey paint so I can get up into there so we don't have any light grey plastic. I know you, some of you think I'm being extra fussy and you don't need to, but believe me, I have seen models caught in the sunlight, caught on camera, uh, caught under a bright light and, yep, you'll see the plastic showing through. That's the last thing you want, especially if you're in a show or something. Not that I'm ever going to put this in a show, but it's just good practice. Okay, so that's that one there. So that's that first door done there. So I'm going to break away from the instructions now, and I'm actually going to go on and make these up. So we've got that one there, that one there, that one there. I'm going to make them up, and I'll come back when they're done. Right, here we go then, next day now, and uh, we've got these um, these hinges all on and everything, all these uh, vents to allow the engine to breathe some air, let some hot air out. So they're all done and I've painted around them as you can see with some dark grey. So that's all looking good. Let's try and get the lighting a bit better. So there we are. Uh, the other thing I've done, I've put these hinges on this one and as you can see when we go on, I think it's that side, yes it's that side that goes on. When they put them on they fit beautifully. The hinges I mean and then if we hold those hinges down we will have opening panels. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to say in the last segment, these doors are quite a tight fit. So what I did, I had a little sort of good old study at them, a good old close look at them. And what I realised was that the the actual radius in the corners on the doors is tighter than the radius in the, um, in the actual panel. So basically what was happening, you had the panel like this. And you had the door like this with a smaller rad in it and it was actually biting in the corner so you just need to go round um i just used a 400 grit just something smooth and just go around and just and just the proper way to, to to file a radius is like that okay if, if any of you want to know that's the aerospace way of doing it that's the way i was taught to do it at rolls royce and um, most people do this the trouble is you you doing this you can sort of do that if you like, you can only file half of it. Whereas if you go this way, you're kind of, you're forced to do the whole thing. Okay. Um, there's a little sideline and I'm sure I'll get lots of comments and discussion. That I'm wrong. Hey, I'm always wrong. Never mind. So there we are. Um, so that's that. Uh, so the other thing I noticed when I put those hinges in, these are, you're supposed to, when you look at the instructions, They'll have you sort of glue these onto here, glue all these, and then just pop the doors on. Just pop them on. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> there ain't no way you're popping them on. Um, they are really, the, the pins on here, if you can see them, but the pins on here are 
quite large and they don't just want to pop in. So what I've done is, what did I, I used a knife didn't I? Um, I've just gone in and just taken the, the tops of those pins away. Just take the tops of them off. At the end of the day if we have to we'll just glue the doors in. But um, And we'll probably do that anyway. But what we're trying to do is get those to go in. And you can see even though I've cut half of them away, they still do not want to pop in there. They are just so tight. So, oh blimey. So let's grab a little, let's grab a little old file. They want one. Oh Christ, I've got it on the floor now. So let's just, just, just take the top of them off. And as you can see now, just with those couple of strokes, that's made all the difference. So maybe I can just come in here with a file, file that like that. No. The other thing, of course, you could do is file a bit of an angle onto the actual, onto the male part, and then it will sort of lead its way in. But as you can see, that's gone in now. They are bloody tight, and there's no way they're just going to pop in there. So um, I'll get the rest of those done. You don't need to watch me do that, and then I'll come back. We'll put the doors in. Okay, bit of a change of um, building sequence here. Just looking at this. What they would have you do here is glue the photo etch panel onto the top of there and then glue this panel onto the side. The trouble with doing that is, grab our photo etch panel, make sure we've got the right way up, uh, make sure we've got the right side, here we go. You can see that on here there are some raised bolt heads or whatever they are and that's, that's what this panel glues onto, it doesn't actually glue straight down onto the face. So you're going to do that, you're going to glue it on that side, but you've got nothing to control how high that goes. So when you put it on, you've got to kind of get it on and get it all lined up because those, like what look like hinges, the little edges on there are going to glue onto these four raised points here. So that's going to be your only points of contact are those four there and those four there. So what I'm going to do is just go on with the sander and just take the paint off of them because when you're gluing with super glue it doesn't have any sort of welding action like the um, liquid poly does with your tammy extra thins and stuff it doesn't have any welding action it's just literally a glue to the surface so if you don't remove the paint you are literally gluing paint to brass or in this case paint to paint so what we need to do is make sure we have our they're symmetrical those bolts so what we can do is just come along here and make sure I've got this the right way up and what we can do is remove the paint from where they go just like so you do not want to be gluing paint to paint when it comes to big old bits of photo ash like this and then on here we can just scrape them away and then when, at the end of the day when we spray it this will get hidden okay I'll do the same on here come here right make sure it's right way up yeah that's the flat side what you've got on here is a nice textured side where you can see the the wire weaving in and out of each other and the other side is just flat so you want to be scraping it off the flat side and as I say, I think I mentioned, I painted all this beforehand so that when it goes together, oh, it looks like they're opposites. So, so when it goes together, you don't just get this green, or sorry, this grey plastic. Well, it might be green plastic if your model's made of green plastic. But you don't want to just get this green, green grey plastic showing through. Or the worst is tan. If, you're, if your model's like German grey or olive drab or the US tank or something, then you light shows on it you can see bloody tan plastic coming through it looks awful so that's why I do all that so there we go have I scraped the wrong side on that one no I do need to get some new glasses I tell you right so what I'm going to do now is glue these on 
what they have you do here is glue them onto there and then glue them onto there. Stupid way of doing it. Glue these on first. Okay, so we could just run around here with some extra thin. You don't need to worry about any seams because this seam here is up against the bulkhead. This seam here is in a quarter, so we want this one to be nice. There we go. And this seam under here is under there, so you're never going to see it anyway. So there we go. So we'll get that out in place. We'll just get a couple of clothes pegs. Doo -doo 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 -doo. One on there. One on there. There we go. Job done. And just to make sure, we'll put some more glue along there. There we are. And then the other one can go on the same. So I think what I'll do is peg, peg this first to avoid the glue oozing. You've, if you watch my videos, you know I say that all the time. If you peg it first, the glue will go into the joint. If you peg it afterwards, the glue will go into the joint and then it'll all ooze out if there's a gap there. Get those glued on nice and strong. There we are. I'm just looking at the model. I think we're also going to have to paint this area here grey because when it goes on, those parts are going to be sunk down in here and you're not going to be able to get to them very easily. Let's just chuck another peg on there. And uh, let that dry. Okay, so they're all dry now. They've been on there for, <clears throat> I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. There goes my throat again. Every time I put the camera on, there goes my throat. So anyway, that's that all done. Um, as you can see, now you can see why I painted down inside there. So now we've got that dark area. And we don't have that, you know, that we would see this light grey shiny plastic. But we don't, we see that dark area. And then once we've got it on and the hole's dark inside and everything, you can see it's just a... Just a, I don't know, a, whatever the word is I'm looking for. So we've got to glue these on. Now we've only got um, eight tiny contact areas. I would normally be using something like this, which is the Rocket Hot Super Thin, but not in this case because as soon as I put it on there, it'll be dry. So what I'm going to do is use, I've also got this one here, which I haven't even opened yet, which is the Rocket Rapid. This is a fast setting medium. Um, I'm not going to open that one yet because I've got this one here to use up. This is the No Nonsense Super Glue, which if you're from the UK um, is is from uh, Screwfix. So it's actually quite good super glue. Um, it, it does actually take quite a while to dry, so that's handy for this sort of application. So I'm just going to put a little bit there on my Pringles lid. This is basically a Pringles lid sat on top of a coffee cap. The only reason I've done that is it makes it easier to see the glue. When it's clear and you don't have anything underneath, it's much harder to see the glue because the light reflects and you can't see where the glue is. Whereas with that on there like that, I can see it much easier. I can from my angle anyway. Right, so let's grab my little um, glue looper and we'll give that a clean. Here we go. There we are, that's cleaned. So there we go, that's nice and clean. We just wipe that off in a cloth and then we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is get my panel here ready to go and I'm going to put some glue on these positions and hope it doesn't dry. There we go. I'm actually putting too much on there. It's running down the sides, but that's not a problem. You could just come along with a cheapy, fluffy cotton bud and just soak it up just like that. So then we can go along and we can put this on so that the edge is square there. And that's the beauty of this cheap and nasty super glue. It sort of takes a while to dry. So you do get that advantage of having to having time to play with it. Whereas if I'd use the rocket, it's because it's a quality glue, it dries straight away and it's like down. 
So this is quite good for when, you know, it's no good if you want, if you want a couple of minutes to play with it, it's no good whatsoever. But if you just want a few seconds, I can't move it now, but you can see that I, when I first put it on, I was able to move it. I'm just rubbing my thumb over it just to sort of push it down and dent it down a little bit as it would have been. Even when it was brand new, it probably wouldn't have been dead flat. So there we are. So that's now on there. And then I can do the same on the other side. So I'm going to grab my photo etch panel. I'm, do you know, I swear I got that upside down. Oh well. Um, so we're just going to put some glue on there, on there. And as I say, it's really important to get the paint off. When you're using super glue and photo etch and everything because as I said it doesn't the super glue doesn't have a, a welding action like your um, Tamiya extra thin does so if you just get one end position just like that and there's no glue whatsoever on that post there so we can get that just like that get it squared up and just drop it on there you can see I've got if you can count the seconds but I'm still able to maneuver it there we go it's down so one of them isn't yeah that one there hasn't gone down hasn't stuck so I'm just gonna put some glue in there and drop it down and then with the cotton bud just go over the top and that'll pull the excess out and there we are and then with these here, you can see the shiny area where the glue is. If I pinch the cotton bud into a point, I can get it in there and soak up any excess. But generally, super glue shrinks back and it's practically invisible anyway. Um, there we go. So as you can see, I've changed the build sequence and made that a lot easier than following their sequence of gluing it on and then putting it on first. So what I'm going to do now is come along with my Rocket Thin. Be really careful with this stuff. It's great glue, but the bottle design is a bit naughty. So what I do now, instead of tipping it out, what I do is hold that up like that and then tip it over. Because what you'll find is as you tip it over, it spits. It, it spits out of the end of the nozzle. And at worst, it'll go on you. At best, it goes on your model. Um, and Chris from Rally Car Miniatures, he was saying he actually, he actually spat into his face once, so uh, not good. So I'm just going to dab this in here, and the reason I'm using this, it's really, really thin, and it dries practically invisible. I, I don't mean um, as in it won't stain paint and stuff, I mean because it's so thin, it dries back like a really, really thin clear coat, so you can hardly see anything. And this is just making sure that all the points are bonded. You don't need to be that tidy with it, especially at this scale, because as I say, it just shrinks back. We'll do the same on this one. Drop it in there. under there and a drop under there and then I can come on with the cotton bud and soak up the excess and we'll do the same on the outside like that in like that and in like that and there we go you just check the corners, make sure it's all glued down. They're probably going to get caught on something and get ripped off. Hey ho. And there we go. So there are other ways you could do it. You could use white glue. I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't stick it very solid. Um, you could use this stuff here, which is really good. This is this GS Hypo Cement. We'll be using that a lot on a forthcoming build that you're going to see very soon. Um... Yeah, it's uh, 
as your money takes your choice, you just do what you want to do. Just be careful with super glue on clear parts if it's in an enclosed space. So if it's like a 70 second scale Spitfire, a little tiny fuselage, you put super glue on the edge of the canopy, glue it down, it will fog. Um, sometimes it will fog in open air, but generally it will always fog in an enclosed space. Right, so there we go. So I'm happy with that. Now, if I want to come in there with a fiberglass pencil, I can, and I can just come along and scrub away at that excess glue that's there. As you can see, it all just disappears. These things are brilliant. RS514868, or you can buy the um, AK ones. I'm not sure if they're more expensive or what, but it's just the same thing. You just probably find the AK one. They, they do a fiberglass pencil for uh, World War II Russian, World War II German. Uh, they'll do a fiberglass pencil for World War II Shermans, but they'll do another one for World War II M18s. So just, you know, make sure you get the right one. And then, of course, there'll be all the, the, uh, the range for vehicles. And then there'll be the, um, the one for removing mud. And there'll be one for removing paint. And there'll be one for removing glue. Uh, yeah, I think you know where I'm coming from. So there we are. That's that all done. And that's all ready to fit on there. So we can see if we get this glue out of the way so we don't glue ourselves to the model. We get the model over here. Big thing it is on screen. And then that will go down in there like so. And as you can see it's a lovely tight fit and it goes down in there beautifully. Um, and the roof falls off. Again we've got these tab things here to deal with. Gone in. It seems everything putting down on the hull is a tight fit. But there we go, we can see that that is in there now. We've got a lovely join across the back there. If, if remember I said I didn't glue this bulkhead, that's why, so it can find its own position. But you can see that it's gone down there, and again, again we've got this angle iron thing here going on, so we'll do the Mr. Surfacer the same as we did here. But when it finally goes on, that's how it's all going to look. So let's see if I can get it off. And as I said, this area in here. It's going to be difficult to get paint into, so I'll probably paint that before I glue it on. Or maybe I won't. We'll see. So we'll just lift that out of there. There we go. It's that corner that's tight, I think. So um, maybe just give that a bit of relief, because we all like a bit of relief from time to time, don't we? There we are. Right. So, get the uh, le tank out of the way. Now, because we've got all that done... Now we can do everything else. So we've got all these doors to put on. Uh, I'm not putting the tools on yet. We've got the tools here. I'm not putting them on yet because I might paint them afterwards. I, I may put them on. We shall see. We've got the um, barrel cleaning rods going here. We've got their holders going on here. So we're going to glue all that on now. So this box here goes at the end. So that's going to go on like so. Just like that, that's in there. And then we've got this bracket here going on and the wing nut faces forward. These parts on my kit, um, they are from the F-Sprue. And on my kit, the F-Sprue had a very large mold seam and a little bit of flash. So hopefully yours will be better. But, uh, I had a bit of an issue cleaning all these bits up. It's quite... Um, Quite a task cleaning all this up. So I'm going to get some glue into the bottom there to make sure that stays in place nice and solid. I'm also going to make sure it's vertical and square and everything. And then I'm going to go around it with some extra thin where I've sanded out all those seam lines and everything just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. One down the front. There we go. So that's that in place. Then we have a little lifting eye going in here, part A36, and that is going with its eye facing rearwards. So that is literally going to sit in there. 
and the slot is much too big for it so we're going to have to put some Mr. Service around to fill that in because we've got a bloody great gap down the side of it get my tweezers so I can play with it get that squared up In fact, if I pull it over, I may be able to cover that slot up now. The slot appears on the other side. It's like a one mil wide flange going into a sort of two mil wide slot. So bear that in mind. A little bit of Mr. Surface around the bottom cotton bud, that'll be gone. But you don't want any gaps here. Show if it's, especially if it's dark yellow, because you'll see the gap sticking out. Um, and then we've also got these little uh, lifting eyes on the ends here. So they're going to go on with their hooks facing downwards. So these are obviously the three lifting positions. Let's get the quick setting in here. These are obviously the lifting positions for lifting off the rear deck. Now luckily these slots are narrower so you can't see you can't see the slots sticking through. It's a really quick build when you get all this done, you know, when you get all the parts cleaned up and de-nibbed and everything. It makes for I think it makes for a more interesting video for you guys because it just flows and everything keeps going. So there we are. Then these doors can go on. So it's obvious where these go because the hinge positions will determine where they go. Okay, so just gonna come on with some extra thin in there and some in there and then just push those hinges down. Make sure the door stays down. And there we go. And then once we've done that, we can just brush around just to make sure those hinges are welded in. Nice and solid. And there we go. And then we've got this one here. Just going to drop down in there. Again, the hinges go straight into their little holes. Get some glue under there. Get some glue under there. I'm hoping it's not going to ooze out of here because a lot went under. Nope, that's good. Okay, so we just push them down, just like so, and then we've got, now these need to be careful because we can get the wrong way round, and you can see that on these doors here, we have three holes in the top, and they're for the spare wheel, the spare wheels, and they actually go outboard, so that one there is going to sit in there, just like so. Jess hair on there. She has to play part. And then this one here is going to go like that. And then that hinge is going to drop down into the holes just like so. Drop a glue around there. Drop a glue around there. There we go. And there we are, that's that all done. And then we've finally got this toolbox thing which is going to go on here. So I'm just going to put a drop of glue in there. I've got the shakes, no why. And a drop of glue in there just to hold it down. I don't want it to look like it's welded on because it's obviously just bolted on with those little brackets that are moulded on there. We go so that's that done. I also went round with a um, with a knife. I don't know if you can see in there, but I the knife for those clasps that hold the lid down. I just sort of relieve them up a bit to give them a bit bit of a better look. So there we go. That's our engine deck lid. Oh, we've got those bits to go on. These little things here, God knows what they are, but they go on. Okay, so that one's going to go in there. I don't know what they are. If you can tell me what they are, peeps, I'd love to know. Little bracket. With a couple of rods sticking out of it. Let's get some of the quick setting in there, actually. There we go. 
and then I'm going to put some glue in the slot first on this one and then that one will go like that there we go Just like that. So happy with that. Guess they're rods to stop somebody opening up the cover and shoving some of that in there. I don't know. Very strange. I'm not even sure if they're supposed to be. I'll have to go and check my references quickly. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like, you know, parallel to the top face or, or parallel to the uh, angled vents. I'll go check my references in a minute. All right, so I did find a picture. It looks like they're kind of bent down. They may have been bent down over the years or they've been stood on, but um, whatever. Uh, I suppose having them down is going to have them less likely to be caught or anything. So these here, these are actually for the um, the barrel cleaning rods. I've got these two bits of photo etch on there. They're for the barrel cleaning rods, which I've got in here. So you've got three of the plain ones. As you can see, I've got all the parts in here that I haven't put on, all cleaned up, all denibbed. So there's three of those, and they go in. So there's one at the bottom there. One at the bottom there. Then we've got this one here going at the back. Oh, they fit beautifully. And then that one there, which is going to slide in, just here, and look at that, they go in there lovely. So um, that's, how, that's how they're going to look, and they're all glued in there. I'm not sure, tell me if they're made of wood or metal or what, if they, if they should be painted wooden or whatever. Um, but still got a bit of cleanup on the ends to do, I see there. So they look lovely, don't they? Very nice indeed. So, and then we've also got tools to go on, so you can see that we've got, do -do 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 -do, there's that axe. I think that went in the side there, I didn't know, it's not that one, it's, dum dum dum, where is it? Where are you, there you go. That one there is going to go, do -do -do, there. So, that's going to sit on there, so you can see again, we've got, when we've got all our tools on and everything, that's going to sit on there like that. So that's all lovely. So yeah, very nice indeed. Right, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to get... I'm going to get them sprayed from up under there. Cause, well, well, I can get to them from this angle because once they're on the tank I won't be able to get in there. Um, and I'm going to get the this area down here painted as well. And uh, we've got these <whistles> opening doors so we can look inside and reveal nothing. <laughs> right. Okay, there we go. You can see I've painted all around these grills now. Got the spare wheels out. I've glued the spare wheel mounts onto there. Because when we turn the page in the instructions, you can see here, they're basically asking us to build up the spare wheels. I hadn't noticed this optional symbol. You've got these six pegs going into each wheel. Um, and it says optional. I don't know why, but uh, they basically are here in the box. I don't know what... Oh, come on. Can't believe. I don't know what they would look like. Um, either here, I've got them out and cleaned them up. So they basically would sit in there like that. I don't know. I guess that's spare track pins, is it? I guess that's spare track pins. Um, I haven't got the tracks with me. So I suppose that's what it is. So they're saying they're optional. You can stick them in there and... That one's coming along. So I suppose that's where they keep their spare track pins. I don't know. Um, but certainly they, they stick right out, so uh, check your references and see what you want to do. They might even go somewhere else. Um, so there we go. So the spare wheels are going to get glued together and painted and everything. I'll do something a bit interesting with them. Um, so the rear cover is on. You can see I've painted all around here, like I said I would. Painted all around there. Got a bit carried away and ended up painting all around the suspension and everything on the sides and completely painted underneath. 
So uh, there we go. Now what I have got, this is all LP27. Um, I have got a big mixed up bottle of XF63, is it? German Grey. And I may just give it a dusting of that just to, because um, it's a bit motley on there. I don't want to use up all my LP27 on the underneath, but I don't want it to look like that. I guess it's okay. I don't, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, but lots and lots of lovely detail in there. So uh, really, really nice. Um, also did the, the glaciers, is that, the, is that the glaciers plate or the front plate, whatever, and also the tra the back plate as well, and then all around the um, around the tensioners. So uh, basically all grey, ready for a dusting of the yellow, which is how I like it to look. So, I'm going to get this glued on now. I've also put some Mr. Surfacer around that hook. It needs some more. I can see there's a hole appeared. There is a, that is a massive slot in there for that little tiny peg. So um, for that little tiny hook. So basically there we go. I was also thinking with these hutch hatches opening, you could actually open these up and then you could like store stuff in there. Like if you wanted to hide some keys or something like that, you know, I mean, if somebody breaks in your house, are they actually going to think of going and looking in your model tank for some keys? Oh. So you've got some access as well there. So there we are. Anyway, I'm going to get that glued on and then I'll see you back for part, uh, it's going to be nine, isn't it? And in part nine, we're going to work on the gun. So this, there'll be, all this will be done. Well, not all this will be done, but I'll get the wheels painted and everything, get them on. And then um, part nine will be all about, we'll speak a start on the gun, which is the bit I'm really looking forward to. Um, I've got two minutes left. I would just like to just go through, because a lot of you have got this kit and you said you haven't quite started it yet. And certainly somebody commented in part six that aired last night, um, they hadn't made a start on it yet, and I suggested they don't. So what I would suggest is with your build sequence is do that, do that, do that, do that. Okay, so do one, two, and three. And then when it comes to four, stop. Okay, don't do any of this, none of this at all. I mean, if you want to put the front drives on, you can. Don't put any of your radius arms on. Don't you already, you, You've already seen me change all the build sequence here. Obviously, I've already changed all the build sequence there. But what I would do at this point is jump forward to step 13. So I would do, if I were you, it will work. It would be absolutely fine. I would do one, two, three. Okay. Miss four. Miss five. Miss six. Okay. Um... Do whatever I've done on here, or just completely miss that out. Jump forward to step 13. And start to add your interior and everything. Add these plates on the sides. And then get all this built up. Okay, get all this done. Get all this done. Get all this done. Get the actual top of the hole mounted onto the lower hole, so you can get it all clamped up. Get your rubber bands around there. Get it all held in. And then you'll have a solid model and then you can go back to step four and start adding all your, your, your suspension and everything in. Because the problem I had was being able to clamp it all up and having all that there in the way while I was trying to um, while I was trying to get everything on the top. So that is what I would do. So thanks for watching. I'll see you for part nine. I'll get some photos up with a bit of music and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.